Hello Finksters. So today we're going to be taking a bit of a look at the pandas plotting module and we'll be selecting the first function in that module and that is the Andrews curves function. <clears throat> so we're going to look at what Andrews curves are and where they're used. We'll introduce those of you who don't know it uh, to the pandas plotting module and we will also be outputting the graph or the Andrews curves using matplotlib uh, the pyplot module and we'll be doing that by using a CSV data file and we will create a data frame from that which will be imported into pandas and then pandas will plot to matplotlib and then we will put out the final Andrews curves graph and as I say plotting the Andrews curves. So let's talk about Andrews curves and understand a little bit more about them. So developed by a statistician David F. Andrews in the 70s and when you have multi-dimensional data if you've got more than two or three dimensions things like scatter plots can get fairly messy and it can be very hard to see patterns in the data. And so David Andrews came up with a, an equation which will create a sine curve for each series of data and then overlays each of those sine curves. What that allows you to do is you can see where each of those series may correlate or equate to one another, where they may differ, or as the pattern goes on, where they may form clusters. So useful to be able to see patterns in data. Where are they used? Well, biology, we'll be looking at that today. We'll be using some um, biology data to actually do the Andrews curves, quality control, sociology. Um, I know they're used in semiconductor manufacture and, of course, machine learning and artificial intelligence, which is where we take an interest in them. So the tools we're going to use today, obviously Python, because this is a Python course, and then Pandas. And if you haven't come across Pandas before, it's a, I call it Pandas. Some people call it Pandas. Um, it's a data analysis module for Python. It's open source, and it's used widely through a lot of industries. And you see some there, economics, academia, finance, statistics. We'll also be using matplotlib, and that's a plotting library that we use in Python. It's a very powerful one, and it provides you a whole host of tools to visualize data. And the pyplot module has a set of functions which will allow us to configure the plot that we will be outputting, and you can do a whole lot with that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Finally, the CSV file. The iris data is a quite an old piece of data. It's the first piece of data um, cleansing that people will get introduced to or for Andrews curves or the sort of things that we're doing now. Um, it's been going for many years. It was originally collected in the 30s. It's the equivalent of Hello World for when you do your first Python code. Iris data seems to be the standard for when you do your first bit of uh, data cleansing with um, things like multi-dimensional data. I've put the URL there as to where you can find it. You can also see that in the article. But of course you can use whatever data you wish. So feel free to follow along with this. Otherwise supplement your own um, multi-dimensional data and um, do the same. So when we go to configure the CSV file, um, once you've downloaded it, just change the suffix to, to CSV, and it's just bald data. It has nothing else um, attached. So I've actually put in some information. Um, the, the four columns are sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, and obviously the class to the right there. So there's three um, classes of iris that are in this uh, data set and there are 50 samples for each class. So there's 150 um, data series in here. And if anyone's wondering what a sepal is, 
that's the bit, the pod if you like, that holds the flower before it opens. When it opens up, the sepal goes apart and sits underneath the petals. So obviously there's people in the world who go around measuring this stuff and this is the data we're going to use today. And the reason I've added these labels is just so it makes sense to me. So I can see um, where I'm going to be calling some of the information for the plot from and to understand how each column relates to the other. But you don't have to do that. You can just leave these out if you wish. So the Pandas plotting module, it's got 12 functions. As I said, we're using the Andrews curves function. And here is a screenshot of what's in the Pandas plotting module. The first one is the one we're looking at, but you can see all the others there. Now, we will be going into each one of those with an article and a video like this one um, in the coming weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the Pandas plotting functions. But the Andrews curves function. So this is the syntax and so if you're really interested there's the <laughs> there's the function itself um, for those of you who love data science for those people like me who it makes your eyes glaze over a little bit um, looking up at the top in the yellow there you can see that we're using andrews underscore curves open bracket frame which is your data frame class column which will be the column that you're using to to categorize the different um, data sets then there's um, x which we're not going to use it's just a, a default and that's the the matplotlib axis object samples which we will use samples will just talk about how many samples you're going to get to form the curve if you do 50 or 90 you'll get a very jagged curve sine curve um, it defaults to 200 we'll be using 250 to get a nice nice smooth sine curve um, which gives a little bit of a better look to the plot color we'll just accept the default color map default and keyword arguments we won't bother with and uh, they're used to pass um, to the matplotlib plotting method we won't be using those today. All right, so let's go do some coding. All right, so here we are. I'm going to enlarge that a little bit for those of you who are using small screens. So here we are with obviously importing the packages and we've done an import pandas as PD, which is the standard alias that most people use um, when using pandas. And we're going to import matplotlib and the module pyplot. And we'll use the plt alias for that. Now in the article I have shown if you don't have pandas or matplotlib installed, you're just using the pip package installer to do that. I've shown you the syntax for that in the written article. The next step is obviously to use pandas to read our CSV file. So read underscore CSV, brackets, open a string, and then obviously the location of the file. So that's where my file is located. You obviously need to substitute yours. Close string, close brackets. And we're going to then pass that CSV data frame now because it's going to create a data frame to DF. Having captured the data, we will then create the curves once again using pandas. So we spoke about the Andrews curve syntax just now. So it's PD bot dot plotting dot Andrews underscore curves open bracket and as I said we're only using three of those parameters we're using DF which is the data frame information here we're using class which was the name of that fifth column I could have given it any name iris I just used class and we're using samples equals 250 to get a nice smooth sine curve in our plot 
and that will create the Andrews curves. It will take a little while if you've got a slow machine. Mine's an old clunker, so it does um, pause for a little bit when we do this, as you'll see. And we will pass that to X. At this point, we can leave Pandas behind because it's done what it needs to do. And now we switch over to matplotlib. And so the matplotlib pyplot functions We'll use three of them. There are a whole host of them, and they're well worth investigating if you want to plot data. Um, I think from last count, there's something like 120 or 150 different functions, and they allow you to do a lot of things with presenting data visualization. And uh, areas, line, line color, labels, axes, there's a whole lot you can do with that. But in this case, we're just going to plot x. So it's x.plot open close brackets having done that we'll give the plot a title so plot dot title and there you see hello finksters blah 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 and then finally having plotted it and given it a title we will ask matplotlib pyplot to display the final output and we do that with plot dot show open bracket close bracket so it's a very simple system to run through we import the packages we use pandas to read the data file and to uh, create the andrews curves and then we use matplotlib pyplot to plot the andrews curves and give it a title and show it to us now, just before we do that, coming back up here to the CSV file, um, Pandas can read a whole lot of different data. It's not just a CSV file. So we could have used anything. I just chose CSV because it's a very common format that everyone understands. Um, everyone's come across spreadsheets before. But you can read, so it'll read delimited file into a data frame. It'll read from your clipboard. Uh, if you've got text on a clipboard, comma separated values, obviously, that we're using, uh, dictionaries, series, arrays, um, tuples. There's a, there's a whole lot of things that will read. Um, obviously, different commands for each one. And um, you can investigate that under the, the Pandas um, information online. But today, we're going to use CSV. And just before we do that, I might just flick over to the Iris CSV data just to show you what it looks like. So there we have the data. And as I say, there's 50 um, data series on the Iris Setosa, giving the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. There are 50 on the Iris Versicolor and there are 50 on the Iris Virginica. So it's, it's a very simple um, database of information. It's quite small, but it's more than adequate to show what we're doing today in terms of Pandas and Matplotlib. All right, so that done, we'll close that down. And let's run this and see the output. And it chugs along a little bit. It takes a while, as I say. I've not got the most modern computer. And so there we go. Let me just enlarge that so that you can see the output. And if you look at that, you can see distinctly the three sine curves. So. Iris Setosa, which is this light green one here. Iris Versicolor, which is the darker green. And Iris Virginica, which is the purple. And at this point, you can see the value in Andrew's curves because you can see with this correlation. You can see with Versicolor and Virginica that they correlate quite closely to each other. Whereas the data from Iris Setosa is quite distinctly different. So it's, it's not hugely different, but it's different enough that you know that it, it is a different type of iris.
And what this actually refers to is, I think it's sepal width and petal length. So this particular one, and I'm hoping I'm getting this right, um, the petal length is shorter than the sepal width, whereas these ones, the petal length is longer than the sepal width. There you go. Important information, take that away. You didn't know that, did you? But you can see the value of being able to cluster this data into a visual array, allowing you to see differences. And it's really useful if you're wanting to cleanse large amounts of data. Um, you can do an Andrews curve plot and you will definitely see outliers if there's still some cleaning to be done. All right, so let's go back to the slides. So in summary, we now understand Andrews curves, what they are and where they're used. And effectively, they are just a way of creating a two-dimensional plot from multi-dimensional data by taking each series and creating a sine curve using an equation and overlaying those sine curves to allow us to see correlation or differences in data. We introduced the Pandas plotting module and the Andrews curves function within that. That's one of 12 functions within the plotting module and um, we will be doing the other 11 slowly over the next few weeks. We introduced the matplotlib library and the pyplot module and you understand that we use three of the functions in that module there are something like 150 odd functions for you to choose from so you can customize your graphs quite nicely and created a data frame from csv data using the pandas um, read csv function then we plotted the andrews curves passed it to matplotlib and used matplotlib pyplot module to output the resulting graph so it's quite a simple process. Um, you have a huge degree of flexibility and it gives you a wonderful ability to understand where your data sets correlate and where they differ. And thank you very much for watching and I hope that was really useful to you.